It's time for the Mommy to Mobile Radio Show with Martha Sanchez, a show focusing on providing women with information to take their life off pause and help them build a successful business. Martha is a registered nurse with a bachelor in nursing and a master's of business administration, and the Mommy to Mobile Radio Show furthers her personal mission of empowering women to help them build successful businesses so they can reach financial independence. Coming up, we'll discuss such topics as leadership, social media, search engine optimization, marketing, branding and other business building topics helping you grow your business it's the mommy to mobile radio show and now here's your host martha sanchez thank you for joining me and welcome to the mommy to mogul radio show where every week i bring you resources to thrive in today's marketplace are you an entrepreneur who is interested in being the host of your own radio show do you want to be acknowledged as the expert in your field Do you want to increase your visibility and get heard? Then you're in the right place. Our expert team has put together a podcasting by professionals product to get your name in the game right away with a step-by-step instructional. So what are you waiting for? Hurry. Special pricing is available now at bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash P by P and roll. So join us. And we're reaching millions, and so can you. Dream big and take action now. Go to bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash P by P enroll. All right, well, let's get to today's show. Are you thinking about Facebook ads and don't quite know where to begin? Richard Martin, Facebook ads specialist, is joining me today, and he's going to be sharing the secret sauce to knowing how to effectively run Facebook ads so you can get the marketing results you want. I can hear everybody behind the scenes going, oh, I really want to know more. I really want to know more. Well, before we start, let me tell you a little bit about Richard. Richard Martin is the founder of WCN Interactive, a company dedicated to helping businesses effectively promote their company using online techniques so they can attract more business. He's also the co-founder of the GPS Academy, an online social business learning center. He is a web marketing pioneer and a creative and passionate internet entrepreneur with 35 plus years of business experience, most of which was with Fortune 1000 companies. Richard has spent the last 15 years improving internet marketing, sales, and business development for companies, both locally and nationally. He has a proven track record in creating, deploying, and managing numerous clients' internet marketing strategy by means of search engine optimization, pay-per-click campaigns, and social media marketing. Richard is a graduate of Mari Smith's Social Media Mastery Immersion, an authorized local expert for constant contact, and he has had the pleasure of spending the day with Les Brown and completed his speaker training. Well, I could go on, but let me welcome Richard Martin. Richard, are you with us? I'm here. You make me sound really good, Martha. (laughs) Well, you are good. You are good, Richard. Absolutely. And and um, thank you again for uh, being on the show again. Um, it's always such a pleasure, and you always got such a wealth of information to give to my audience that I, I know they're waiting. So let's get r- dive right into it. But before we begin, a lot of people I know always think about, you know, why should I really buy Facebook ads? And the common question that comes up is, do Facebook ads – only, uh, only are they only picked up by the uh, by the search engines in Facebook, or do other search engines also pick up Facebook ads? Two good questions there. Um, if, if I would, I'll go back to the first half and, and use that as an intro. Should everybody be on Facebook? Only if you want to grow your business. Only if you want to expand your reach, uh, put more money in your bank account. Uh, so obviously my position is I think most businesses must be on, on Facebook uh, just because of the number of people that are on Facebook uh, in, in that whole setup that goes on. In the United States, the last number I saw was 
101 million people in the United States are on Facebook. Um, that's a that's a pretty good sized population to uh, try to get your ads in front of. And within that, when you start looking at ads and and trying to reach psychographically and demographically the individuals you're looking for, um, you've got a pretty good probability of finding who you're looking for with 100 with 100 million people. Yeah, that 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 is so true. And it's it's 100 million, you said, right? Hundred uh, last last number I saw was one hundred and one million U.S. people are on Facebook. Wow, that's that's very impressive, <laughs> and that's just the, the U.S. That doesn't even count the rest of the world because the last no, number I saw the the for the worldwide was uh, over a billion with a B. Yeah, the last number I saw on that a couple of weeks ago it was in the Sunday paper. I think we're um, worldwide. Like is a uh, 1.3 billion people on Facebook. So when you when you look at this little bitty Facebook company that got started in a Harvard dorm room, dorm room, you know that's that's a that's a pretty massive uh, accomplishment that's that's happened there, and the the infrastructure behind it just just has to be totally amazing the the way they do everything, and you know everything they do is categorized and indexed and stored away you know every, anything and everything you put up on on Facebook um, is there forever and it's it's searchable within Facebook uh, a lot of it's searchable through other search engines because you know Google Yahoo Bing they, they crawl the Facebook pages too yeah absolutely so just, just be careful what you say because it never goes away so that answers kind of my second question, that things that are posted on Facebook, including ads, are picked up by the search engines. Absolutely. Your, your, your ads are picked up. Uh, Google, Yahoo, Bing, read the ads. However, they don't display the ads independently within the search, their, their search engines. So, um, I mean, that would be like going against their own revenue model. I mean, Google, Yahoo, Bing sell their own ad platforms. Facebook is in competition with them. So um, there's, there's no way they're going to uh, cross-populate ads, uh, you know, just, just for economic reasons is, is the biggest, biggest uh, reason that that would happen. Um, but, yes, the ads, the ads are indexed. Yeah. So I'm assuming that when you what you mean by that is that it will be picked up as a post, but not come up underneath like the ad columns. Like, for example, on Google, on Google's the Google search engines, the ads either come up on top or on the sides. So it wouldn't Correct. come up there. But if you search, it would it be it would be found as if, a post. If you, if you could do the right search, yes, it would be difficult because you'd have to know exactly what the ad was. But theoretically, yes, you could you could pull it up. Uh, although they don't they don't make it easy and for obvious reasons. Uh, if mm -hmm. they served other companies' ads, and that's kind of uh, destroying their revenue model. And you know, businesses are in business to make money. That's just the whole point of it. So um, you'll you'll. You could probably, if you search long enough, hard enough, and deep enough, find it, uh, but I, it wouldn't be something that would be uh, in the first few pages, no. Okay. And and that's a good thing to know because a lot of – we, we want to have people have realistic expectations and understand that's all about business because most of the social media sites are really becoming very much um, a, a, a public and business model, and it's about – them being able to make money. Well, yes. I mean, Facebook, you know, is a public corporation. You know, once a quarter, they have to take their uh, their entourage up to Wall Street, and they've got to report their corporate earnings. Uh, so that's not a uh, that's not a friendly task if you're not making money and if you're not having uh, at least first quarter to first quarter uh, increases. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's like any business, uh, even small businesses like yours and mine. We we have to make sure we make money. We have to sure make sure we're profitable, or else we can't stay in business and have to do other things. But in looking at this whole whole process, I think 
it's a pretty good model. I, I, I think it's a fair model. Um, I, for my own personal preference, I prefer it over keywords. Uh, you know, if you go into Google and you, you have to pick a word, um, so I'm guessing on what word is going to be the best word. Now, they have some keyword tools in Google that, you, that will help you out. Uh, let you know how much has been uh, searched of that particular keyword in, in the last month or so. So you pick that up. But the whole thing about Facebook is it's behavioral. Not only do they read what you post, they read what's, what sites you go to. What, what are you interested in? What are you looking at? You know, um, I go look at some airplane sites. And all of a sudden, in, in my right-hand column, I start seeing airplane ads on that. So though that's how sensitive this, this Google-Facebook rivalry is. They're, 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 they're after the literally billions of dollars that are out there in the advertising market. They're up there against the newspapers. They're up there against radio and TV. Um, they're just they're fighting, they're fighting a good fight. And with 100 million people in the U.S., you know that's a that's a pretty big pretty big number to have to uh, conquer if you're in some other industry. Very interesting, very very interesting. Um, and I know we have about a minute left before our break, but um, one of the the things that I want to discuss when we come back, Richard, is how a novice can get great results from Facebook ads. And maybe even you can explain, too, um, reach versus engagement for the ads um, as a basic thing, because I think a lot of people don't understand the nuances between those those two things and how Mm -hmm. it's really measured. So um, that would be a great segue uh, for us to um, start the next segment. Uh, Are you um, and. Let, let's let the folks know where they can reach you. They can reach um, Richard at WCNInteractive.com. And to find out more about his services and uh, the GPS Academy, too, they can find out through there, right? Correct. All right. And we'll be right back in our second segment with Richard Martin. Remember, it doesn't matter who you are or where you came from. The ability to triumph begins with you, always, so says Oprah Winfrey. This is the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show, helping you build your business. And we'll be right back with more from Martha Sanchez after these. Are you like so many women working in a job you hate? Let Martha Sanchez take you from a regular mom to an entrepreneur. Just imagine running your own business and living the life you dream of. Take action to change your life with Martha's Mummy to Mogul Coaching Package so that you can do what you love and make money too. Go now to www.mommytomogul.com or call 305-209-KNOW. That's 305-209-NO. This is the All Business Radio Network, ABRN. Welcome to Podcasting by Professionals. My name is Keith with Radio Links Broadcast Marketing, and I am here today to introduce you to five top industry pros who will teach you everything you need to know to start your own professional podcast. At the end of the course... We think you'll be well on your way to becoming an expert host of your own show. By the way, please do visit our website. It is podcastingbyprofessionals.com. Welcome back to the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show with with Martha Sanchez. She's here to provide you with information and resources that will empower you to build a successful business and reach financial independence. Now let's get back to the show. It's the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show, empowering women to build a successful business. And here again is your host, Martha Sanchez. And we're back in our second segment with Richard Martin. And we were talking about how a novice can get some great results with Facebook ads. And 
Um, I specifically, I asked Richard if he would explain a little bit what the difference between reach versus engagement for ads, because there are some terminology in there that I think is confusing to many people. So it would help to kind of get a starting point with what some of that terminology means so we're all on the same page. Oh, good question. Excellent question there. You know, reach is real simply defined as the number of people that see what you're putting up, see what you're posting. So that's, that's, that's the reach. Um, typically, on a percentage basis right now, uh, on a typical post, your reach is well, 6 or 7% of the, the people that like your page. So that's, that's all that's going to, that's all that's going to see it on that. Now, reach can be modified, obviously, by ads. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, reach can be modified um, by people sharing a post. And uh, that is the, that is the fastest driver of, uh, of getting something out there is, is having somebody share your, your information, the post that you're putting out there. Now, the, the hard part in, in doing this and, and what we work on here with uh, Sherry and myself is training people how to actually get a post that's worthy of being shared because that, that in itself is, a, is an art. Um, I liken it a lot of times to people that write uh, headlines for newspapers or headlines for, for magazines and You've just got to be you got to be spot on, and you, you it has to be worthy of that because when somebody shares what you're doing, as as far as in the land of Facebook, that is the ultimate comp- compliment. That is the that is the ultimate thank you for writing that particular post, and it's it's really it's really nice to to get that happen. Now, conversely, is engagement. It's nice to get things that are shared. But engagement is if, Martha, you wrote a post, and then I came in, and I engaged with that post. I, I, I made a comment on it. Uh, I expanded the conversation. Of course, the value in doing that is when, when I post it then, or, or make a comment on it, then it, it's conversely shared over to, uh, to my profile, or not my profile, but my page. So when we look at it like that um, – that's when your numbers really, really, really start to grow uh, on that. So between between commenting and sharing, that's that's the that's the silver bullet that everybody's looking for because that really does get you the reach uh, on that the, that you're that you're looking for. And of course, engagement spreads it out even farther to other people. And you know, for the most part, that's free. When we were like in the first segment talking about Facebook ads. You know, we have to pay for the ads. Uh, we've got to we've got to go through a whole process of identifying the people that we that we want to send an ad to. But the the way you send that ad is you look back at your post and you look back at your engagement, and that's going to tell you who your audience is: male, female, income. What do they do? Um, are they male, female, married, single, kids, not? Um, so those are all the little little things that make a successful program in a post, and they also make a successful ad. Does that make sense a little bit? Yeah, it does. So it really goes down to the basic um, business information that you have to know for any portion of your business. You really have to know who your target audience is or who, in in this case, who your audience is that's engaging with you. Correct. Absolutely. Very, very, very well, very well stated on that. Because, you know, when, when you're putting it out there, if, if you want the reach, you have, to, you have to have enough people that are following you, that have, have liked your page in order to be seen, and then conversely to get that engagement you have to have a lot of reach because engagement is is very very little of of what happens unfortunately in in Facebook. A, a lot of people, um, for whatever reason, my suspicion is is nervousness and 
and uh, uncomfort in, in going out there and publicly expressing themselves, much like public speaking or doing what we're doing, talking on the, on the radio. Uh, they look at it as a, as a big potential vulnerability, and so they, they tend, to, uh, tend to stay away from it. But in the, in the same way that that happens and we write the headlines, that's where all the activity begins. And when you do that, the, the little little bar, in the, the white bar to set, set to the left on the top blue banner uh, of your f- Facebook profile, that's a that's a search engine right there. It says search Facebook. Um, that's Facebook's version of Google. Uh, now it does not leave the Facebook confines, but anything on Facebook you can you can search. Any post, anything on a profile. Any dates, any birthdays, any anything you want to anything you want to look at doing, you can search through that little bar. Um, you may remember uh, a couple of years ago the hashtag was really really um, popular, and people were hashtagging this and then putting a, a word behind it, and people were searching up stuff. That hasn't gone away, and that's still a great that's still a great vehicle for searching. Um, topics uh, on Facebook because you got to use that bar as a search engine. Just think of it uh, as a Google for for Facebook, and that's what the, that's what makes this so interesting. Because if you're researching a topic for for whatever reason, you know, just do your hashtag and, and start looking for it, and it'll it'll pop right up. You know, it's 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 very similar to the to the hashtag on on other sites. Which which makes total sense. So, Richard, one of your first tips for uh, novices to get great results is really to drill down the demographic information for their target audience. Correct? Yeah. You you don't don't even don't even think about trying to craft uh, an ad until until you really know what you're looking for. When you go into the Facebook ad platform. Um, First time I show people all the information that's that's in there, um, people are just they're they're just amazed. It's 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 almost jaw dropping when when they see all the different things that's there, because their their whole search profile is modeled after credit reports. So I basically tell people anything you can identify in a credit report, you can identify in a Facebook ad. So let's say there's a ABC company out there, and I just want to target males or females that are between 35 and 55 years of age that like orange juice. I can do that. Holy moly. And when you think of the, the power of doing that, you know, to me, you know, if you were selling orange juice, that's that's the way you'd want to do it. On that, now at a wider scale, obviously, but um, but that that's that's the benefit of this of this model that Facebook has built. Um, everything that you post creates an interest, mm-hmm. and that interest is there yeah, forever. And that's 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 a very powerful um, uh, ability to utilize. It's kind of scary, it, it also, but it's it's very powerful for from a marketing perspective. Now, apart from being able to drill down the specifics, demographics, likes and dislikes of of your um, target audience, what's what's another uh, basic tip that they need to know? before they can even begin to attack a Facebook ad? You have to be very specific, not only on who you want to target, but how they communicate, how that target market communicates on Facebook. So, you know, you want to do some searching in the, in the search bar and find that demographic and, and see what they're conversing about. Different times of the year, different industries talk about different things. Um, you know, we're coming up, uh, it's not that far away for beginning holiday marketing. A lot of holiday marketing begin, is beginning right now uh, for, for next year. So if you want to get on the inside scoop, you can start looking at what's going on for the uh, 2015 holiday Christmas rush uh, right now. 
on on there. And of course, it will get more, much more intensive as as we go on. Uh, but uh, later on this month, the National Retail F- uh, Federation is going to put out their their forecast for the next year's preliminary forecast for next year's holiday season. It, they're going to put it up on their on their Facebook page. It will be there for the world to see and the world to search. So anything along those lines that you could possibly dream of ever wanting to look up under Google, you can also look up under under Facebook. You just go to the ad platform and start looking it up. And you can break it out any any way you any way that you want to, and that's that to me as as a marketer is the number one benefit that Facebook ads has over Google. Google, I have to again, I, I've got to make some assumptions just like I do in Facebook, but I have to assume what one keyword somebody's going to be looking for in in Google in all the Google searches in order to in order to be found, and. You know, I think it's a whole lot better than just trying to pick a word if I can pick a a, a profile statement that somebody has and look at look from that standpoint and find out who they are holistically as opposed to trying to do just a random Google search of of looking up, you know, websites and of course Google does scan your profile. Um but to me, that's just a much more effective way of advertising, of getting it out there. Of course, when you when you look at everything, you know, magazines are going online so they can be read, so they can be scanned. Newspapers are going online so they can be read and they can be scanned. And newspapers um, now charge a premium for online ads as well as the print ads. So um, all kinds of things are happening out there in the in the marketing world. That are that's just driving this uh, really, 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 really fast, uh, and that's that's the exciting part about this because um, this this is really cutting edge marketing when you when you look at it. Um, this this little blue and gray and white Facebook profile that we look at in in, in our our main stream, um, it's it just it just packed. Um, yeah. And, and, and you're right, just, it, it, there is power paradox. in that versus trying to figure out one keyword. And mm-hmm. Richard, we've got about we got a, a few seconds before our uh, next break. But when we come back, I want to talk about likes and a common question that people want always ask and want to do, which you and I are kind of on the same page with. So when we come back in our third in our third segment, we're going to discuss more about Facebook ads with Richard Martin. Where you came from. The ability to triumph begins with you. Always. So says Oprah. This is the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show, helping you build your business. And we'll be right back with more from Martha Sanchez after these. Are you looking for something more in your life or business? More success, more stability, more happiness? It's all out there waiting for you, but it doesn't just happen. You've got to go get it. Make it happen with Michelle McCullough, where motivation and strategy intersect. Michelle is a serial entrepreneur, acclaimed speaker, and the WooHoo Radio Network's resident business and success strategist. Michelle has the smart strategies and experience to help you improve your life and take your business to the next level. You've got big dreams. You've got big vision. Now it's time for you to make it happen. This is the All Business Radio Network. A-B-R-N. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the Million Dollar Mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the Million Dollar Mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. Hour. For more information on the Million Dollar Mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. 
Welcome back to the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show with Martha Sanchez. She's here to provide you with information and resources that will empower you to build a successful business and reach financial independence. Now let's get back to the show. It's the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show, empowering women to build a successful business. And here again is your host, Martha Sanchez. And we are back with Richard Mar- Martin, and this is our third uh, segment. And uh, we were talking about likes, and we left off there. And there's a common question that I always get asked by clients, Richard, and I know you and I are on the same page with this, but let's discuss it. People who want to build up their number of likes ask me whether they should buy likes. (sighs) Yes, I know. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's, that's a question that really comes up when, when people are just really getting started on, on Facebook. After you've been there for a while, it, it's not as, as great an issue. <clears throat> but in the, in, the, in the beginning, a lot of people will look at, look at Facebook. And if you only have a few hundred likes, uh, the common interpretation is people won't think I'm, I'm as good as somebody else that has 1,000 likes on that. Um, to a certain degree, that is probably true. But I think the greater degree is that the quality of your posts, the quality of your communications, your ability to to post on other people's uh, pages is more important, and it's going to build you your audience in the long run. And you know, in the in the long run, that's that's what's in that's what's important because people people need to know who you are, what you are, what you stand for and why you're there. And they can't get that through just just the like. Uh they've they've got to look at likes and then because that's how people see you, but then at the same time they they're going to go look at your at your content. What are you, what are you doing and the the ultimate compliment as I said before is when somebody engages on one of your posts. Um and that's that's the whole side of it. The the analytic structure that you need to go to to evaluate all of this is is just is just that simple. Uh, a like is a form of en- engagement. Uh, a like on a, on a post is a form of engagement. A comment is the ultimate engagement. And so yeah, it it all it all falls together and, and it all comes together in in that side of it. Uh, when, once you've been around for a while and, and, and you've got your first few hundred, it's a whole lot easier to grow organically in the beginning. I don't see anything wrong in buying some likes so long as you've defined your precise demographics before you go to buy. Because you don't want to buy likes and from people that don't want to hear from you because then then they're not getting the message they wanted, so they're going to uh, – unlike you and to to see fluctuations in likes going up and then going down i think is worse than having low likes in the beginning yeah and my my opinion quite frankly is it's about quality not quantity and Absolutely. if and and to me the best way to really increase your likes is by doing effective facebook ads for your post, you know, to increase the visibility of your post or, or to to do a Facebook ad itself about um, an event or something like that. To me, that's that's the best way to do it, because then you're really focusing on you're not, you're not buying an unknown factor. You're buying <laughs> the ability to get to in front of the people that are more likely to be your ideal customers. That's the way I see it. Am I wrong uh, about it, that, it, Richard? No, you're 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 spot on on, on that. I do want to add one thing while we're talking about Facebook ads. I'm talking about the Facebook ad platform. I am not talking about boosting a post. I have nothing positive to say about boosting boosting a post um, because you cannot drill down deep enough in your demographic in order to do the the job that we just discussed that you and I just said needs to be done in order to get the right person liking your page. That's why you need to go to the Facebook ad platform. Yeah. Yeah. Which you can and, get to in the upper right hand corner. There's a little in the blue bar up there on the right hand side there's a little arrow that points down. You click on it and you'll see uh manage ads. 
Yeah, and I've I, and I've always used the ad platform, even when I'm talking about a post that encourages them to go back to my um, website for uh, you know a free gift or, or, or a free op- opt-in. I really have never used the boost the post uh, function because I I didn't find it had specific enough. I thought it was kind of a waste of my money. And that was uh, that was my point. I couldn't have said it better. Um, it's wasting your money because it isn't specific enough, and it isn't uh, exactly nailing your your demographic that you want to uh, speak to and spend your money on. Yeah. Uh, where where you can do that very effectively with the Facebook ad platform, and of course, when you talk about that, um, the Facebook ad platform is one thing. The other thing is Power Editor. Uh, a, a power editor lets you <clears throat> group ads in, into e- either by companies or, or in, by uh, what you're trying to promote in the ad. If it's, is it a product? Is it a service? Is it an event? What, what it, whatever it is that you're trying to push. So when you get into the power editor, editor it lets you uh, even further segment the grouping of your ads, and you can – turn ads on, turn ads off real easily in that platform. Uh, do everything you can do in the ad platform except it's just in one spot that's easier to easier to play with. Right, right. And I, I, I do love that functionality of it. Now, let's talk a little bit about budget-wise. Is there a minimum budget that you really – think is worth using Facebook with and anything less than that, it's really not worth it? Um, you know, well, first of all, let's deal with the technical side. Facebook really doesn't have a, a minimum budget that you can deal with. Uh, you can put a lifetime budget in, in Facebook or you can put a daily budget in, in Facebook. And I've used both of them be, before, depending on what I'm doing. If I'm running a long time ad, uh, that I know I'm going to be up there for a month or two months, uh, I will do lifetime budgeting. I've had some short-run ads where we're just promoting a product right now, and I've just run the uh, the daily ads where we want to balance out the, the spend on particular days or increase them on particular days that are good shopping days and decrease them on days that are not good shopping days. So there's there's a number of... Uh, of criteria that you can you can play in on on that portion of it. Um, well, but, let me let me interrupt you a second there because that's an interesting concept. It, it, it's it's very strategic what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So let's, for the sake of our discussion, say this is we're getting close to um, uh, of Black of Black Friday. Let's say so mm-hmm. then you would start maybe scheduling stuff uh, uh, a month in advance or, you know, whatever that is. You Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. figure that people are more likely to look at the Facebook ads uh, two weeks before Thanksgiving and you start drilling, you know, putting out your ads there or – is that yeah, the type we, of strategy that you're talking about? Scheduled for for next fall, okay. And now no. I don't act. I haven't actually put them into the Facebook ad platform yet, but we we have regular people that uh, that promote with us. So we'll start building out our ads and start doing everything in early August. Some of the preliminary ads will start running in September. When we every every year, Sherry and I do a holiday marketing special. And there's a lot of people, when I say a lot, a lot of people that start spending their holiday shopping money the 1st of October. And October is really a good month. Um, in, the, in the last few years, the week of Thanksgiving uh, all the way through um, you know, Black Monday uh, has been – or Black Friday in, into whatever they're calling Monday. Now I'm, I'm going blank on that. But oh, that Cyber Monday. as strong as the earlier shopping parts now. So this is, this is when you really get to research your market and, and you learn, we, you know, early on, first segment, we talked about the behavioral portion of what's there. So it's really important when we do this to really understand our client and, and their buying habits. And just, it, it, just within the retail industry, there's several ways it goes. 
but then you know I mentioned August, but now August in July, if you're selling retail, you have back to school that starts middle of July, and it's it's going to be it's going to be over by middle of September. So you've got all these things that lump in together. So you've you've got to figure out your start dates and your stop dates, and when you want to invest the dollars and when you want to just sit on them and maybe not go away, but not have a very big budget out there that you're dealing with. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing. For example, if you are uh, you focus on a line of product that's for weight management or exercise, uh, one of the prime times for that is right after th- <laughs> right after New Year's when everybody has the New Year's <laughs> resolution of oh, I've got to lose weight because I gained you know five or ten pounds during the holidays, right? Yeah, and the best day to start that would be Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly enough, this is true. <laughs> Either Christmas Day or the day after, one of, one of the two, you know? Yeah. So th- that makes total sense to me uh, <laughs> in terms of the logistics. It's it's similar to planning for when you're in a retail, but you've got to plan for the same things if you're a coach or if you're selling a service versus an actual physical product. So yeah, yeah. I, I think... What really you're saying here is that we need to know the cycles in which our ideal client buys and uh, have our our uh, Facebook ads targeted toward that cycle and a little bit in advance, at least a month, maybe a month and a half or two in advance, start revving that up. Correct. It, yeah, just, it just depends on, on the holiday. Uh, you know, we're, we're coming up on... Uh... Valentine's Day now, um, you know, Valentine's Day, you really needed to start, you know, right after uh, New Year's because uh, this, you know, by now it's it's too late to think about Valentine's Day or getting anything, uh, at least anything significant. Uh, you know, that's going to be very difficult to do. Shores or stores are running out of stock. Flower shops are running out of flowers. I mean, this this is this is their cash week. Yep, that's absolutely right. And they it, can take it, you it, to the dry cleaners <laughs> if you if you yeah. if you wait till the last minute. <laughs> and it, and it's and it's no different. See, everything we just mentioned can be sold through a Facebook ad. So you 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 want to be a flower shop and you want to sell your roses and have people pre-purchase through a Facebook ad. Beautiful, wonderful. You want to do back to school? Same thing. Watch you know, watch what's happening now. We we're, we're going to go out of this and. You know, starting next Monday, see what's see what's coming up towards Chris, or towards Easter, and Mother's yeah. Day, and all those things that are that are going to be happening here. Boom, boom, real, real quick. All those things are going to start showing, and it just Facebook's so easy on the ad platform to work with. Uh, Power Editor is so easy to work with for that platform for using uh, Facebook ads. And Power Editor, everybody, that's that's part of Facebook. On that, All right, but, well, Richard, I'm going to, to interrupt to you because we're on our break and we'll be back in our fourth and final segment with Richard Martin. Back with more from Martha Sanchez after these. Welcome to Podcasting by Professionals. My name is Keith with Radio Links Broadcast Marketing, and I am here today to introduce you to five top industry pros who will teach you everything you need to know to start your own professional podcast. At the end of the course, we think you'll be well on your way to becoming an expert host of your own show. By the way, please do visit our website. It is podcastingbyprofessionals.com. This is the All Business Radio Network. A-B-R-N. Are you fascinated by the stories behind the stories, the people behind their masks, the truth about people's failures and redemptions in both their business and personal lives? Then Off the Record Secrets of with host Judy Schreiner is for you. It's people's secrets that make them interesting, but very few folks are willing to reveal them unless they trust that their information will be treated with accuracy, fairness, and respect. People have been entrusting their secrets to longtime business journalist Judy Schreiner for the last 25 years. And now she's bringing her expertise and impressive contact list. Tune in and call in as host Judy Schreiner talks to guests off the record as they reveal new secrets each Tuesday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. 
Welcome back to the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show with Martha Sanchez. She's here to provide you with information and resources that will empower you to build a successful business and reach financial independence. Now let's get back to the show. It's the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show, empowering women to build a successful business. And here again is your host, Martha Sanchez. Oh, my goodness. And we are in our fourth and final segment with uh, Richard Martin from WCN Interactive. And you can reach Richard at WCNInteractive.com. And you can actually find him on Facebook on Facebook.com forward slash WCN Interactive. Um, so, Richard, let's talk a little bit more about uh, about the ads and what about the ads where they are using what's now called e- email baiting for a freebie? Because that, I know, has become an issue. Richard? Not really an issue if it's done right. Uh, if, you're, if the post that you're using or ad that you're using to bait with uh, sounds like and looks like a Facebook post, then I, I don't I don't have an issue with it. Um, email email baiting um, usually requires that you click on something, gives you your email, and they send send you a bribe, uh, and that's that's my word for uh, getting your email. They're, they're going to give you something free, uh, a free report, an audio, video, whatever it is. They're, they're going to trade some sort of information that has like value for what you're trying to get in, in, in giving your email address to somebody. Now, the, the other thing, and, and the reason I'm not really concerned about it, is with the Can Spam Act and all that stuff that's going on now, you can opt out of any legitimate email. Uh, it, it has to be somewhere on the email. Most of us, when we send out emails, put it on the bottom. We have a, an unsubscribed or an opt-out tag that's uh, that's at the bottom where you can where you can unsubscribe from it so with me that that reduced a, a whole bunch of my resistance to to doing it because if i wanted some particular information and maybe i even thought it was valuable information and information that actually helped me uh that was fine but if the information they gave me in return didn't have any value you know, I'm going to go unlike their page. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do any business with them. So you just have to think of that from a uh, from a business standpoint. And and what is your brand? What's your brand reputation? What does your brand stand for? We all have a, a brand. We all have a personal brand. We all have a brand within the business we either own or, or work for. And we have to keep that in mind when we're when we're looking at that because we have to represent our brand. So. If you've got a high-end brand, then you have to put out some high-end information that you're trying to get people's emails for, um, and it, that, that high-end means valuable. On that, you right. can't you can't use something that's uh, just a, a fluff piece of of something because that's not going to represent a high-end brand uh, uh, any way positively. And that's that's one of the things that we need to think of and and uh, be cognizant of when we're when we're doing that particular thing. But in general, I am a, I am a fan of the uh, uh, of the uh, the opt-ins and, and trading your email address for valuable information. Yeah, and I love what you're talking about because one of the things that when I try and engage people to uh, to you know give me their email for something, it's usually I uh, I usually put a post with information on on a blog post, let's say that they can go to. They go to the blog post, they get more information, and then if they want more detailed information, they can click on and opt in. So they're already getting something. But if they want more detail, then and, and it's then they can press that second button. So there's another step for them on purpose so that I'm sure that they're they feel good enough about what I'm offering, that this is right for them. Yeah, it's, you're, you're um, kind of using an informal double opt in by asking them to click a, a second time, even though they don't have to put in any information. Um, you're you're really trying to determine okay is is this individual um, 
interested enough to go through a couple of steps and not just not just one easy step of give me your email and, and, and you get your information. So that's a, that's a that's a very good idea for for drilling down just a little bit farther and making sure there's just a little bit more of a commitment there in in getting the uh, in getting the email address and name of the person that you're that you want to contact later on. Yeah. And then I usually mix up a little bit. Some posts, they can actually get something for free. They don't have to give me anything. And others, um, which I feel have more value um, than that one they have to give me their email for. So Mm -hmm. I I mix it up a little bit. And people people know that if they have to give me their email, they're getting, you know, that that's something that that they, well, as they I said before, they, that, that, they're going to get a great deal your, of value. It's not a fluff piece, as you say, or anything like that. Yeah, you know that's that's where you're you're developing your brand standards, and and the the value that you're giving away is says something about you and your business and and what you perceive as 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 valuable. So that's how you're standing out from other people that do what uh, what you do. In the in the same token, you know when we do. Our ads, and we're running things. We do a very similar thing, except within the much more internet or Facebook training and Facebook uh, ads programs that we do. So that's that's a much you know much the the the, the process is very similar. Right, right. Now let's talk a little bit about um, the feasibility of selling directly through Facebook. Um, what are the pros and cons of that? And we've got about a, uh, about four minutes or so um, before you know we're going to be going on our break. So I want to make sure we have plenty of time and uh, give you some time to talk about um, something specifically you have for the audience as well. So we've got about four minutes for this little piece. Okay, you know the, the feasibility of, of selling something directly through Facebook on on just on a post. Um, Obviously, um, you, you can't be done right then and there. You have to take them to a landing page or to a secondary page somewhere else um, off of Facebook in, in order to make your offer, uh, as you said before, and then you have to click on something in there, a Buy Now button or See More or, or you know whatever it is that, that that particular individual or business is trying to accomplish. Uh, so that So looking at... The, going back to your post is where it all is. You have to write that post where you're enticing that person. Um, and I said this in, in, in said this in session one here. Um, you've got to write that post like you're like you're writing writing an ad for a newspaper. Uh, it's it's got to be a bold, eye catching, grabbing headline. You know, you have to entice with the text that you're putting in there. You have to make them want to trade that email address and want to click on that button to go do it. And that's where, that's where knowing your audience is just, it's just so important. Uh, you, you, you just, there is, there is just no way around it. And every one of us have, even though we may be in the same business, have a slightly different audience. Um, just like we all have different friends, uh, because we all have different personalities, different profiles, different likes, different dislikes, and these all show up in Facebook. They don't show up in, in Google, Yahoo, and Bing when you're doing a search, but they do show up here. They don't even show up as much in, in a LinkedIn profile or in a LinkedIn ad as they do in Facebook. LinkedIn is, is, is much more um, business cut and dried. Facebook Facebook is where where people meet and greet and get to know people and, and goes back to the, the old saying, you know, you do business with people you know, like, and trust. And that's the, that's the whole purpose of, of Facebook. You get to build the know, like, and trust. You just have to be very intentional about how you're building it. You've got to put it out there where people feel comfortable in reaching out to you. Uh, going back to the engagement statement you made, they have to be willing at a minimum, to click like, they have to be willing to comment on a on a post that uh, that you, that I or you made. So this is this is all important, and it's hard work. It's it's not something that comes easy. Um, getting to know your customers online is a lot more difficult than getting them to know who your customer is in a brick and mortar because brick and mortar, they walk in, you get to see them, you get to look each other eye and eye and a lot of times shake hands. 
So we, it's a much more intimate situation. It's less intimate online. It's less intimate in Facebook, even though Facebook is a whole lot better in intimacy than Google or Yahoo on those things where you're just doing cold ads. So you have to learn to express yourself in, in the Facebook manner where people can know I can trust you. Now, you can do that with anybody. Um, it just takes a little bit of time. Uh, going back to building your likes through Facebook ads, people want to see what you have to say. They're not going to look at you if you're not helping them. If you're, if you're not the one that's reaching out, remember, it's your page. They're coming to like you. It's your job to entice them to like you, and then eventually you can build that relationship, and eventually – you can build it to the point that there's enough no like and trust that they'll put their credit in on a landing page somewhere and actually trade their hard-earned dollars for your product or information that you're that you're putting out. But it's it's a it's a long hard haul. I don't want to make it sound overly simplified. Now some yeah. people uh, are much easier at starting conversations and getting conversations started. Uh, on that, I'm I'm not really really good at getting initial conversations started. I'm very good at continuing and carry on carrying on a conversation and getting things moving on that. Mm-hmm. So we all well, have Richard. Let me let me interrupt you because we're we've got about two minutes before the end of the show, and I know you wanted to share something with our audience real quickly about uh, a special offer you had. Well, um, right now. We've been talking about Facebook, but right now we're running a, a LinkedIn class that we're that we're doing, and uh, I have a LinkedIn address. It's WCN Interactive, L I for like LinkedIn dash value add on dot com. That's WCN L I dot value add on dot com. Hello. Uh, yep, I got it. I got it. And uh, what we're going to do up? is, um, <laughs> I got it. So, right. <laughs> yep, I got it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that information on um, the uh, the blog for tomorrow, so you'll be able to get into that. So that's WP, WCN Interactive forward slash li dot value added dot com. Correct. Value add on. Oh, add on. Alrighty, and we'll make sure we put that on there. And um, for those of you that don't have a pen or pencil with you right now, and thank you so much, Rich- Richard. Um, this has been an action-packed, an information-packed, really, and uh, action-oriented show because we just—I can't believe it's already the hour is over. Uh, but you have given us a lot to think of, very concrete examples that we can use to take our marketing to the next level. So thank you very much, Richard. Well, I, and, I appreciate it as always. Thank you. And you're welcome to come back anytime. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday for the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Radio Show with your host, Martha Sanchez. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for more of the Mommy to Mogul Radio Show. Martha's goal is to empower you to build a successful business and reach financial independence. For more information on how to get the